am I okay? And the next up is female body parts. Again, so I get lots of questions about this is what a certain body part looks like or feels like. Is this normal? Am I okay? And so I'm going to go through some things that are normal or expected about body parts and things that you should know may warrant a trip to the doctor's office. And we'll talk about why if that is a part of it. All right, so first part to talk about is the vulva. And specifically, so this is for female anatomy, the vulva encompasses the area that starts with the labia majora, so the, the uh, lips, the larger lips of the private area, wraps all the way around to the area right before the bottom, okay? So, <laughs> this is a rough, rough drawing here, okay? The vulva. Outer area or lips of the vulva are the labia majora. Again, that's going to be starting at the front or the mons pubis, so the, the fat pad and part of the private area that's covered in hair. And that extends all the way around the sides of the vulva. And then inside, the labia minora. Um, the labia minora are extra skin flaps on the inside of the vulva and they meet at the clitoris, okay? Um, and then behind the clitoris, so just toward your bottom, um, clitoris and then the urethra or the pee hole. And then the next hole behind the pee hole is going to be the vagina or the vaginal opening. And then toward the bottom here is going to be the rectum or the, the anus. Now, what I want to talk about first when it comes to labia is shape. So here's my trusty old towel. So this is what the vulva may roughly look like. So from the outside, you have the labia majora. And then within, you have the labia minora. Now, <clears throat> sometimes the labia minora are small. Labia minora meet up with the clitoris, okay? Uh, this has gotten to be known as having an innie because the labia minora can be enclosed within the labia majora. Now, it's also totally healthy, totally fine if the labia minora protrude beyond the labia majora, like this. Stick out, okay? Some people call that an Audi, okay? Totally fine, totally normal. It's also okay if you have one that is larger than the other. So to recap, shapes of the labia minora. It is okay to have an innie or labia minora that are enclosed by the labia majora. It is okay to have Audis or labia minora that stick out from the labia majora. And it is okay to have one labia minora that is larger or more pronounced than the other. If you are ever having problems because the labia minora are too large and are catching on underwear or have um, any sort of rough skin or irritation, it is okay to talk to your doctor about this because there are procedures that can help reduce the size of the labia minora. It's called labiaplasty. Um, it's not something that we do very often, uh, but if you are having skin problems because the labia minora are a little bit extra long, then it's worth talking to your doctor about. But know that whether you have an any, an Audi, or a lopsided labia, you are totally normal. The other thing to talk about with labia is lumps and bumps. So there are a few things that might cause a feeling of a lump underneath the skin, whether that's of your labia majora or minora. Okay, so the first one is going to be fortis spots. Basically, those are little sweat glands, supernatural, normal. They almost might look like little pimples underneath the skin, but those are normal findings of a labia minora or majora. They might come and go, they might enlarge or get smaller, but just know that that is normal. Um, another thing that might happen, especially if you shave, is an ingrown hair. So ingrown hairs can happen on the labia majora. An ingrown hair might look like a red or inflamed 
pustule almost at the hair follicle. The last thing that might cause a bump underneath the skin of the labia would be a lymph node. And we have lymph nodes all over our body. The role of a lymph node is to fight off infection and to filter blood through the body. Um, and so we have them all over it's where we have immune cell reaction. So it is quite common to have a lymph node, a little nodule that you can feel underneath the skin. It should go away with time. If it ever gets red, gets really big or painful, you should talk to your doctor because it's possible that lymph nodes can get infected. But um, four spots, ingrown hairs, and uh, lymph nodes, all little bumps that you might find underneath the skin of the labia. All right, next to the clitoris. So the clitoris is found where the two labia minora meet. And the clitoris is going to be a small mound of tissue that is very highly innervated. In fact, it has reportedly estimated twice the amount of nerve endings as a penis. And a lot of those with female anatomy find that this is going to be the site for primary stimulation and orgasm. Questions about the clitoris that might warrant a discussion with your doctor. If you find that you have no sensation or very little sensation at the clitoris, um, it's worth bringing that up with a doctor um, just because there are a variety of conditions including mental health conditions um, or physical conditions that might be causing that and you deserve to have sensation of the clitoris. All right, and then the vagina or the vaginal opening. So found beneath, further back beneath the folds of the labia minora. So the vagina is going to be the primary source of penetration for either penile or finger sex or if you use a dildo or another toy. Um, it's also where blood comes out from a period and so uh, that's where a tampon would be inserted. Now things to know about the vagina. Around the vaginal opening there is something called the hymen and every female has a different type of hymen so to varying de degrees you might have a small just piece of skin or skin flap tissue um, that surrounds the vaginal opening. Um, you might have a little bit more tissue. Now it's less common to have something called a septate hymen where there's actually a bridge of skin that, uh, or hymen that covers the vaginal opening. Um, and then even more rare would be either a cribriform hymen, so something one that has very small holes in it, um, or imperforate hymen, which would mean no hymen hole at all. So completely covers the vagina. To recap, the hymen is just a small skin fold or skin flap that surrounds the vaginal opening, may tear with vaginal penetration or with exercise. Um, this is what is generally going to cause some of the bleeding with first time penis penetration, um, but it heals and it resolves on its own. If you ever have difficulty inserting a tampon, or if you notice that there's a bulge down there um, and don't notice much blood with periods, then it's worth talking to your doctor because it's possible that you might have either a septate hymen, a piece of hymen that goes across the vaginal opening, or a cribriform or imperforate hymen. So those would be the situations when you wanna to talk to a doctor. But a lot of folks also think that the vagina is going to be a source of orgasm with penetration. And for some individuals it is. So it's estimated about 25% of females can orgasm from vaginal penetration alone. So that's one in four. Which means the rest require some extra stimulation, likely from the clitoris, to achieve orgasm. So vagina, a lot of people think that's the source of orgasm but it's actually not the most common site for uh, or cause of orgasm. So just so you know. All right, and then we are moving up on the body, female parts, breasts. So going through puberty, generally the size of your breast is going to be determined by your genetics. So 
what your mom or your grandmothers were endowed with. Also to know, going through puberty, it is common for one breast to be larger than the other. And it, you may end up having one breast that is larger than the other, but especially during puberty, breast size discrepancy would be common. The other thing to know is that breasts can be very tender during development too. So um, just be aware, poking, not advised, because they're, they're sensitive. And then the areola is the area of darkening skin that surrounds the nipple. Um, on the areola, it is common to have little bumps or glands. They're called Montgomery glands. And they basically produce some oil and healthy lubrication that protects the breast. And that's basically it. Reasons to see a doctor would be if you ever have any redness around the nipple or abnormal drainage from the nipple, or if you ever have a nodule or a painful lesion that you want checked out. Just to know, breast cancer, super, super uncommon in young individuals. However, there are other things that it could be that are worth talking to your doctor about, and so um, don't hesitate to bring it up with a doctor if you ever have any concerns. So that's a quick rundown of female anatomy and what is totally common, okay, normal, and reasons you might want to see a doctor. Don't panic though, most things in a young female are going to be on the spectrum of normal, so nothing to be worried about, but hope this helps. And remember, if you have a question for Ask Dr. T, you can either respond in this video or submit through my website, askdrt.net.